What's going on everybody? Dave back again and today, today we're going to end up showing you how to clean up both the offset mode line, clean up the resin pour mark, clean up blebs if there are any, and just generally clean up your resin parts for your mecha, your Gundam, whatever you're ending up working on. Now I do want to do a separate series regarding resin figures and that I will end up doing a little bit separately. They're handled uh, a little bit differently. So I didn't want to mix and match together. I want to keep them separate for you guys. That way, if you're looking how to clean up figures or you're looking to clean up more of flat surfaces, you can just select whichever video that you want. If you haven't already, check out my last video where I ended up unboxing the 124th Sazabi head. Uh, it's a motorized light up motion sensor head. It's a desktop model. It's huge and I am super stoked. Two of those pieces I have pulled out because they need pretty much the most work and I think they'd be a good example. So right now we're going to jump over the desk. I'm going to show you some tools that I enjoy using and I find really helpful in Arsenal in working on uh, kits like this, whether it be commission, private, whatever it is. Everything in this list is affordable. And as usual, there will be links down in the description. I appreciate you guys clicking on those links, whether you purchase something or you don't. It helps out the channel. It helps out me and it doesn't cost you anything. So without further ado, let's jump over the table. All right, boys and girls, here we are down to the table and I've kind of laid out and I'm going to go over each of the tools that I end up using on a daily basis whenever I'm working on resin kits, even plastic kits. Each of these things are universal and these are the two pieces that I've ended up pulling out of the kit to be able to show you guys. I have taken a pen to be able to outline where the overlaps and seams are so that it's easier to see. With them being white resin, it's kind of gets blown out in the video. Now starting up in this corner, this is going to be a 3M sanding sponge. Now I picked up a bunch of these and you can tell how long I've had them. Uh, it's been a while but you get micro fine, super fine. They make about three or four different grits on here, but these are really great if you have rounded edges, things like that, let's say on the headpiece of the Sosby, and these will end up getting used also as well on figures. Moving along over to this side, now these I ended up getting some on Amazon, and then I ended up getting some from Amiami. Now they come in a little package like this. This one is a 320 grit, and it is the orange handle. They come in several different colors, which indicate the different grits. And I think these were, I want to say about 250 something like that per pack so they are very affordable and i think they're even more affordable if you're over in japan but taking a look at this one like i said it is a 320 grit you have a little handle these are made to be able to basically plane flat pieces uh, say something like this these come in really handy you'll see a lot of modelers use these on gunpla and these come in really handy to be able to keep that surface nice and flat and get a nice flat edge. Now these range anywhere from a three up to something like this, which I think is a thousand grit. So basically what you'll end up doing is starting at your roughest grit and work your way up all the way to uh, the finest grit that's on there. Down in this corner over here, we have some jewelers files, which would be these three over here. Um, this one's just a general file. I don't remember where I ended up getting this. This one actually has three different sides on here and it has a different uh, grit file or file grit on each side. On these, as you can see, there are different curvatures. So this side's actually smooth on this one and then it's just curved to a point. This is handy for getting into little nooks and crannies and say curved pieces. This one I really like. I've had this one for years. Again, this came out of a jeweler's file kit and it works really handy for getting into little tight spaces. This one I like, both ends are squared off and there's different grits on each side and it's just really handy to get into like a squarish uh, part that you have. So these three files here actually came out of a Tamiya basic file set and these things are actually really handy. Uh, this one here, you've got a rough side on here and then you've got a curved side. This one, you have nice flat angles on here, a smooth edge on here so that you can go up against something 
and not rough up the underside but this edge here actually has a grid on here for getting into those little nooks and crannies and this file here built the same way all four sides have teeth and this one is just for tearing up stuff like you got something big and you want it gone right away this guy's going to do it next up we have my handy dandy sanding block you guys have seen me use these before they come in a couple different grits this one right here is a great general just working stuff down especially if you have something that's curved you can get it to conform to that this works great on figures this also works great on you know your just general kits uh, if you're wanting to smooth out it's got a rough surface just to knock that down this one here is one of my favorite like favorite favorites this is a buffer pad on here and then this side's a polisher I don't use the polisher a whole lot because you don't want that surface to be super slick otherwise your primer is not going to stick to it this side here is perfect for knocking out any swirls any fine lines from you sanding and just getting it all prepped for primer now something else that I end up using I did end up getting a bunch of these different packs like this one's a 2000 grit and I think I have all the way up to a 5000 grit and these I really like for either wet sanding or I will slice these down and attach them to popsicle sticks with a little bit of glue and that works perfect in lieu of using something like this staying with the theme of sanding these guys you will recognize I use these a lot a lot of people have actually taken my advice you can either get these on Amazon or you can go to someplace like Sally's beauty supply or a beauty supply and get these in different grits this one is same grit on both sides but this one is like a like a hundred grit on one side which is like absurd I don't think I've ever used that but this one over here is about a 300 grit now these you can do light sanding with and they are kind of squishy so you want to be cautious using these on just a straight up flat surface you don't want to put a lot of pressure otherwise it's going to round the edges this one here is handy dandy for knocking down uh, any texture that you have on there just really quick and just smoothing it out now moving on to cutting tools I've got three different types of exacto blades here I've got this one which I have had for freaking ever I like having this blade on here uh, it's nice for getting into nooks and crannies and using the backside to smooth out edges and just little blebs and things like that that are out of the way this is one of the Tamiya design knives and I really like this one a lot because of the small blade that's on there when you purchase one of these it comes with like 50 freaking blades it comes with a little holder uh, when you take out the blade you just stick it in the backside of the holder it's your dispensary once you're all done and then you just put in a new blade uh, the blades stay sharp for for a decent amount of time you will go through them fairly quickly depending on what you're working on and how often you work on it but this one is my favorite and it goes with me everywhere now this guy here is Tamiya modeler's knife pro uh, this guy's kind of big and bulky it is not my favorite but it comes in handy it comes with five different types of blades anywhere from this curve style to a style like this uh, it has a flat blade for working like a chisel uh, it comes in handy but it is not my favorite just because of how big it, that it is and then my go-to replace every probably about six months to a year uh, this is a Tamiya uh, nipper pro it's the gold label and something I have actually noticed this is my newer one that I've ended up getting and I have noticed that the the wedge part is a lot more steep on this compared to my other previous ones so that's a little disappointing for working on a plastic it still works really great and this is one of my favorites for working on cutting off the nubs and everything all right so one of the pieces I ended up pulling off there is a little offset as far as the molds I'm not sure why they just didn't do the mold line across the edge I don't know why they cut across sometimes I just I don't know I just question their their thinking on why they ended up doing this um, but yeah so you have an offset here offset here you get the pull tabs so this one's going to be perfect for showing you how to get those off and then flatten those edges on this piece right here you can see there is a lot of offset on here 
and some of it is a little substantial. It's probably about a half millimeter, almost a millimeter offset on here. So we're gonna remove this part, that part, that part. We're gonna remove this poor tab, this poor tab, and generally we're gonna get this all cleaned up. You can see some of the offset on here. So the first thing that we're going to end up doing is we're just going to end up popping these tabs off. Depending on the resin that you're working with, uh, you want to do use a test piece to see how fragile the resin is. Resin should have, or good resin should have a little bit of flex and give to it. So when you go to do this, you should cut through it fairly easily. If you get something like a Thailand kit, a lot of those will end up um, being really r not rough but fragile um, they use a different mixture for their resin it's usually well, kind of crap um, and they'll chip and send pieces everywhere so you want to be cautious of that now something like this where you see this overlap a lot of times I will come along and I will nip in the center and it will just make it a lot easier to get through here and you do want to nip it down as close as possible. It's just gonna make your life a lot easier in the long run. Now on something like this, you can just get in there, but we can't get in there all the way. So sometimes you'll have to finagle, do something like that. Just kind of work your way around, but, but as you can see, I can't flatten that out. Now, boys and girls, be cautious. You never want to use your X-Acto knife pulling it toward you or toward your finger, but sometimes you can't avoid it and you just want to be cautious. So just be careful when you end up doing something like this. Go slow, go softly, and usually it'll come out like that. Now, while we have this in our hand, we've got this and we're just going to pop across that's going to make it a lot easier and as you can see a lot of that just ended up shattering out now just slide that blade across the edge and it's as easy as that now something like this this is where this file comes in with the rounded edge and you just want to go around it now with something smaller like these we're going to grab the smaller exacto knife and we're going to repeat the same process crisscross and just rotate around now on this piece over here we want to remove these tabs so what I'll do is as you can see on here I'm going to go at an angle like this I'm going to clip this way clip this way and I'm gonna clip down, but not all the way. I don't want it to bite into this original piece. It's a lot easier to file off than it is to add. So I've trimmed it down close, but there's still just a little bit on there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab the big file Now, once you have that where you want it, I'm going to take this guy right here and I'm just going to work down that edge to get rid of the rough file marks. I'm going to take this guy right here and then depending on how it ends up feeling, I may just sharpen that edge with the back of an X-Acto knife. And there's that piece now as I said there's a little lip on here so how we're going to end up getting rid of that we can use something like this but a lot of times what I'll end up doing is I just want to do it quickly so not with a lot of pressure because I don't want to round anything but we're just going to get this smoothed out and you wanna concentrate on the side that's higher. So this side is higher than that side. When it starts wearing off your ink marks, if you choose to do so, I usually use like a reflection of a light 
and I also use my fingers to be able to feel the ridge marks. So that one actually feels a pretty smooth. This one over here, we're just going to hit it. And there wasn't anything over on this side. Next up, I'm just going to use this one. just to knock that down and then I will use the flat in parallel with the whole piece so that it's uniform and the ink is actually going to permeate but I can feel with my fingertip that it is completely smooth and there's no more ridges going back over to this piece Use our rough file and flatten out this whole edge. And what we're going to do is on some of these, so here's part of the pour marks, I'm going to use the X-Acto knife and you just carefully want to shave that down to where it's pretty much flush. Just use your fingertip and feel it. It's almost like peeling an apple. You just want to drag that blade along. Don't use a lot of pressure. You don't want to cut yourself. But you're like whittling away the resin. But this is going to save you a lot of time and headache. Just be cautious. I cannot stress that enough. We missed this in the f intro video, so we're just going to cut that out. We've got a little piece that's up in here. Now I can't get to that with this blade, but I can with this. So we're just going to slide that in. Slide that down and around. And then we'll just clean that up with a file. This is where the micro file comes in handy. You can just get it in there and flatten out those edges. Now I haven't looked at the instructions to make sure that that's, you know, that this is necessary to have this gap in here, but if it shows that it needs to come out, I'm just taking it out anyway. And we're just going to flatten out this backside. Now what we're going to do right now is I'm just going to go through real quick, flatten out all these seam lines and all these offsets, and then we'll be back and I'll show you what it looks like. Now on something like this piece right here, you can see it's butted up against there. So you want to take whichever file that you choose, you want to make sure and have the smooth side toward this other piece. That way it doesn't bite into it and just work that away until it's all nice and smooth. Now what I'm doing is on this side, I'm working it all down, getting it all flattened out. On this side, I'm leaving it as is so that you can see what it looked like basically before. And I've pretty much got everything all worked down, except for there's a piece right here. If you can see that ledge right there. And what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of that. And then we're done. Now this piece is going to serve a kind of a challenge because we have a piece here. We don't want to round this edge off, want to try and keep this nice and flat. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a smaller file here and I'm just going to slowly file on the higher edge and keep checking it until it's completely flat. Now, once we end up having that down, I'm going to take the planer here and that's what I end up calling these. And then I'm going to take the next one. Now this piece is hard to judge because this is for one side. So the angles are not the same. So you can't really judge on that, but I think that looks pretty good. And I would just go over this piece a little bit just to make sure that those edges are nice and sharp and hit that one a little bit. and looks pretty good to me. So as you can see, it's not super difficult working on resin. It's just tedious, uh, it's time consuming, and you kind of have to think of yourself as a, uh, a resin carpenter. 
on something like this, you're taking uh, your you're taking yourself and basically re-sculpting what someone else sculpted to clean it up and everything. You, I like to think of people that work on things like this as an artist. You are refining, you are redefining, and you can even change how things end up looking. Now you can see from this ledge right here what it ended up looking like on this side. And I think it looks a lot better. There are a few little places that I do have to, like there's a little fine angle here that I'm going to refine and everything. But this gives you a general idea of what it's going to look like. On this one right here, it's nice and smooth. And this piece is pretty much ready for primer. One of the cautionary tales with working on resin is, well, as you can see, the mess. There's a lot of powder on here that you can't really see from the camera, but you can see all the little bits and everything. One, make sure you clean up your mess. Two, I would put down a cloth or something. That way you can just kind of fold it up, take it outside, shake it off in a dumpster or something. Three, if you're doing something with say a Dremel tool or, or anything like that, wear some kind of mask. This is not healthy for your lungs. Something small like this, I'm not super worried about, but doing a lot of sanding and stuff, I will end up actually closing my door off to my room, keeping the cats out, and then putting on a, a dust mask of some kind to make sure that you don't end up inhaling on this. If you saw my video about safety with working with resin, then you'll know what I'm talking about. So I want to thank you guys all for tuning in. If you like this video and you want to see more videos like this, definitely hit that like button. Leave a comment down below. Uh, next video coming up, I think, is going to be working with getting pieces fit together where they go to snug and then doing some pinning, showing you guys how that ends up working. And I'm just going to take you step by step on basically how to build a kit from box to done. I want to thank you guys for all tuning in. I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, definitely hit that like button. Hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. And as usual, there will be links down in the description for all the items that I can end up finding. Any of your purchases that you make uh, after clicking those links on Amazon help out this channel immensely. I super appreciate it. And without further ado, I am out of here. I will see you guys all in the next video. Peace out, YouTube.